Hey everyone, welcome to the Don't Settle Squad podcast episode 5 with me Mark McCourt aka Guy Who Didn't Settle. That's the Instagram handle so if you're not following me there I suggest you, you should. That's where I put out most of my content and I always feel a bit silly you mention this every time but for people who are watching it for the first time to give you a bit of context. I suffered with chronic pains and injuries for 10 years. I essentially was told to settle for for that that my body wasn't able to do the things that I wanted to do like jujitsu and and stuff in the gym so I didn't settle for that that was the big catalyst to get me to where I am now where I didn't settle for the movement limitations I've got back to jiu-jitsu chasing high level strength goals now which you know sounds mad to me from from if you had told me back then that I'd be able to do that now so yeah that's what the whole story is about and I'm just putting out content inspiration and education is the way I think of it I'm trying to put out inspirational and educational content on Instagram here as well to try and inspire people like the old me people settling for the movement limitations for their body their mindset their life um, because it's all kind of interconnected once I didn't settle for my movement limitations and I saw the power of that it spread throughout my life you know it ended up changing careers to do this didn't settle for my career and, and for lots of other things so that's what I want for you if you're listening to this I want to inspire and educate you to go after you know your true self not settle for you know other limitations that people will will put on you so today's episode a little bit of a different one it's going to be lessons and takeaways from 2021 so yeah my, my biggest life lessons from 2021 you could say um why am i doing this one because this is the content that, that i really like listening to i've listened to loads of these from people over the years in terms of podcasts or even on youtube You'll pick something out of it. That's the main thing. Look, does one person know everything? Definitely not. You know, some of the stuff here is like, we'll say slightly on the side of relationship stuff, psychology stuff, because again, it's it's just my own review for the year, not intended to share it. But then again, I'm thinking, you know, I think this is why people like some of my content. I'm just open, authentic and relatable. And I'm, you know, there's no bullshit with me. I'm just, just being true. And yeah, for that reason, I'm, you know, some of them, it's not really going to be mobility stuff here. Um, But yeah, good to see into the into the life of people a bit more and kind of see challenges they've had how they're overcoming them and like I said you'll pick out some sort of nugget of wisdom here that hopefully will click for you and and really help so yeah that's why why we're having an episode like this today um so I'm on a timer here don't know how long this is going to take but um yeah cap it definitely 50 minutes hopefully maybe 20 30 but as usual I'll probably ramble cool so let's get into it the first one then relationships are our biggest mirrors okay maybe you've heard that one before maybe you haven't but when I heard that quote it just yeah stuck with me from some of the stuff that I was trying to work on this year relationships are our biggest mirrors and like a simple example of that we, we all get triggered in different ways like you know there's no person in the world that doesn't get triggered by things we all get triggered by different things but once you actually realize that these relationships are just mirroring back yourself to you it makes a lot more sense because you know think of it let's say john is irritating me let's pick a random name let's just say john is irritating me and i think it's john well maybe paul and stephen are here too and paul and stephen aren't irritated by john so is it really john no it's it's you and and your own personal stuff and so that's why like all relationships whether it's friends you know partners family members whoever it's a reflection back to you and it's not like you know it sounds simple but it's not it's not easy to accept because we we don't want to accept that we don't want it to be something about us it's easy to shove that away oh no it's about them it's not about me most of the time it's about you so worth having a look into that um you know if that sounds like it's something new or you're constantly triggered by the same people by the same situations definitely worth looking into that side of it um yeah, even Google and things like, you know, Carl Jung, the shadow side, all that type of stuff, if you've never looked into that before. So, yeah, like the quote there, everything about others leads us to understanding ourselves. And that's something I'm passionate about is basically learning and understanding, like, you know, about mobility, strength training, mindset, whatever. But understanding myself is is the root of all that. So, you know, that, that's ground zero. You need to understand yourself better. It's something that you're going to constantly be working on if you want to improve First of all, yourself, the relationship with yourself, that's the most important one. You're with yourself 24-7, so you need to get to understand yourself, get to like yourself over time, um, or else you're not going to have a very happy life. So, 
you know, that's even stuff coming from Naval Ravikant that he would say, that's the most important relationship, the one with yourself, because you're with yourself 24-7. Um, and, yeah, you have two choices, like I'm saying. Try to be humble and just work on it. Nobody's perfect by any means. We all have shadow side, things we don't like about ourselves. You know, so we can either be humble and work on it or neglect it and avoid it and keep repeating the same patterns. That's the way it's going to go. And something else just popping into my head here, which is going to happen as we go along. Um, yeah, like so some of the self-help advice that, that I think is bullshit or not helpful is things like be yourself. Just be yourself. In, in certain contexts, okay, so what I mean by that is like, just be yourself. I don't think that's helpful if the person you are now you're not happy with. Because if your people like resonate with some of this stuff, you're not happy with yourself. That's why you're, you're looking for answers and for people to help you. So if, if you're just like, oh, just be myself, then you're stuck in the same patterns that you have. So, you know, that's not actually going to be helpful. What I think is more helpful, or at least in my own experience, that's all I can give is, you know, a line that's better than that instead of, um, just being yourself, try to work towards someone you'd be proud of. I think that's a much more empowering and better line because, again, the relationship with yourself, you're, you're going to be with yourself all your life. How are you going to have a better relationship with yourself? Become someone that you'd be proud of. And I, I saw, it, you know, that to me is your true self. Some, you know, trying to reach your higher potential, someone that you would be proud of. And that's that's when I became happy, you know, that's when, when I'm starting, you know, being true to myself, following things I'm passionate about, saying what I mean, you know, not conforming to society, to, you know, sticking my nine to five, all that type of stuff. Once I started being, you know, my, my true self and start working towards being a person that I'd be proud of, you know, that that's, I suppose, my little nugget there instead of just saying, oh, yeah, just just be yourself. Because, like I said, it's a bit ironic, like if that was the answer, then you'd already have the solution, wouldn't you? So, yeah, on to number two, then which is kind of leading into the, or interrelated with the last one, like being naive is the bottom of the mountain, humility is the top. I'm sure, again, that's a quote I read from someone. What was they talking about here? Yeah, like it's easy to judge others until you're in the middle of a similar situation yourself. Yeah, so I've definitely had some of that last year where, yeah, like if I'm being honest, for certain situations that I ended up in, if I saw people in those situations years previously, I would have been like, oh, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> you know? So, look, that's just me being honest. You know, I would have been like, oh, what, what the fuck is he at like? And then, just like I'm saying there, it's easy to say that from the outside until, whoa, you're smack bang in the middle of it and you're like, oh, okay. So, yeah, that, that was lucky. You, you probably have to go through that to, to realize it. But the other kind of takeaways in relation to that, that everyone sees the world through their own lens. And once we kind of understand a lot, a lot more about that, the goal isn't to get people to, to understand you and fully agree with you, I think is a good takeaway. You know, again, I'm speaking to my old self here. If that's resonating with you, great. If not, cool. This is all I can kind of give. So that one was a good lesson for me. Even going back over the last few years is that, yeah, the goal isn't to get everyone to understand you and everyone to, to agree with your points, we'll say. Um, because everyone has a different view of the world, everyone has a different lens of it. And if we have that attitude, you're always going to be frustrated and annoyed and angry. Like, simple example here is with the mobility. So, you know, I'm doing this for a good, good couple of years now, trying to get people to take ownership of their mobility limitations, work on them, you know, not wait until it's too late, don't wait until you're injured. And having to give up sorts like I was to prioritize it, it's better to be proactive, do it now, you know, just like with our teeth. We don't wait till they're black and falling out to brush them. You know, we need to look after them before that. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to convince the world of that, but obviously everyone isn't going to accept that. You know, there's people in different situations in life. They don't give a shit about that now, and that's fine. So, like, I would get very frustrated over that um, of what, like, why aren't, why aren't they interested in this? Why aren't they taking it seriously? But again, we all have different shit going on in our lives. I've changed that now. Just like I'm saying here, I'll be true to myself, put out the information that I can to help people. Information the old me would have really resonated with. So I'll connect with a certain number of people, help them. The other people, that's life. That It's their lives. It's up to them what, what they want to do. It's no point me getting angry frustrated that I can't change their minds or change their opinions or whatever it's you know you're never going to be be happy that way so that's just a mobility example but again that can relate to, to everything in life too 
And one last quote under that that I heard last year that really kind of connected with me. If you want to be happy, stop expecting other people to be you. So that kind of links in with that there. You know, I prioritize mobility because I've had a really bad experience of not being able to do things I want to do. I'm essentially expecting others to to have my same realization and it it may not be the case for them if they haven't gone through the same experiences. You know, so that, that was a really good one too. If you want to be happy, don't expect other people to be you. You know, other things like putting your standards on other people and this type of stuff. They're their own person, you know. It's, you know, I've kind of learned to be more mellow, to calm down a bit, and just kind of, yeah, r- realize that I'll be able to help a certain number of people, and that's life. The other ones, I won't be able to help everyone. So just kind of accepting that will give you, yeah, give you more peace, a better kind of outlook on it. Third point, then, follow the results. Yeah, this is a principle I keep mentioning on Instagram a lot because this is what really helped me to start my journey. I'd got five different diagnoses from like was the experts on the human body about what was wrong with me and I had to settle, give up sports. And it was when I started to follow the results instead of doctorates, degrees, big names, whatever. That's what actually got me my first mobility results. And then once I, I realized that worked, that's my strategy for everything now, following the results because at the end of the day, that's what we want. That's why people come to me. I've no, I don't have a doctorate on the human body or whatever, do you know what I mean? So it's like... That's my approach, and that's what I tell people. Even that's what I tell clients, obviously. But even people who reach out to me on Instagram, what's the best way to get X? Follow the results. The reality is, whatever it is you're trying to do, there's somebody out there in the world who has already done it. Go find them, pay them to mentor you, to coach you, and they'll show you the the shortest way there. And and that's what I've done for mobility. But I've had that in my 2021 lessons again because. I've done that for business now and it's been so helpful again and I'm kind of like why didn't I just do that sooner so I did that for mobility I've gone to six or seven of the best strength coaches and mobility coaches I could find over the last like three three years you know invest lots of money time effort that's that's how you prioritize things you have to give it everything um, and I've got great progress on my, on my own mobility my own strength but then last year I did that for business too I invested heavily in a business mentor um, and that was really, really beneficial. You know, business was going so much better. But again, why am I surprised? It's like I, I was trying to go at it myself and obviously with, with the help of other people. Um, but yeah, really investing in someone that's been there, done that, built successful fitness businesses, the wisdom and knowledge and everything coming from them was, was amazing. So again, it's, it was just a reminder to myself, like, Mark, follow the results, works. You know, do, do it for, for everything. Um next one then i suppose this is another kind of psychology one yeah tr- a tr- so a tree's branches can only reach to heaven if its roots reach to hell so that's coming from carl jung um a psychiatrist who had a massive effect on psychology today um and this is just about the shadow side again yeah so you know as i'm saying i even get blocks trying to talk about this stuff like go to a professional is the best thing to do you know this is obviously just my own personal learning and whatever wisdom i can give you here great but don't you know take with a pinch of salt is what i'm saying but yeah everyone has a shadow side so it's linking back to some stuff i said at the start about relationships you know if you think there's no bad side of you or you like everything about yourself you're you haven't looked into it enough you're you're shutting off parts of yourself so everyone has it's like two sides of a coin everyone has a good side everyone has a bad side if you can't see the bad side to yourself, you've probably repressed it, ignoring it, whatever. As Jung will say, like self-actualization, becoming your real true self is integrating both of them. Is integrating the shadow side because that's your true self. You know, we we have a good and good and a bad side too. So very interesting. Just I was just basically reading a lot into psychology last year. We'll say like relationship psychology, just general psychology to understand myself better. Like I'm saying, that that's ground zero to to improve my life, improve relationship with myself, improve my work, my training, relationships outside of work, etc. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much what I had there. Like, remain unaware of it. You'll project it outwards onto others. If you become aware of it and integrate it, this is the path to becoming your true self. That was my, my realization on it. Next one then, number six. Very interesting one here. Find your place on the social spectrum. I find this very, very interesting because... We're talking about introverts, extroverts, how much social interaction do you need, okay? Because 
I'm a very introverted person. I know it's a bit ironic because people just know me as Guy Didn't Settle on Instagram where I put out loads of information. Now you're listening to me talk for ages on a podcast. But this is because this is my passion. I like talking about stuff that I'm passionate about and want to help people with. Besides that, I'm very much more of an introverted person. Like Even on personality tests and stuff, it comes out maybe 75, 25. So it's roughly, what it, you know, that kind of level. And I'd be very shy as a kid and all that type of stuff too. But the main point of it here was what you think is an introvert and an extrovert is probably wrong. Or definitely what I thought about it was wrong because I used to think, oh, because I'm shy and don't like speaking up and all this kind of stuff, really really shy in school, even bit my voice breaking there trying to talk, but you see, like, that kind of stuff, that means you're an introvert. And extroverts are people that are very confident, can speak out. Yeah, just conf- confident people is, like, extroverts. That's what I kind of would have thought. And then you're thinking that, in you know, I suppose the old me would have thought that I'd never do something like this, that an introvert couldn't try to help people, try to speak up, share his thoughts and all that type of stuff. That would be very, very scary to me before, but obviously you can overcome it. Um, But that's not what an introvert is or that's not what an extrovert is because, you know, look at me now, I'm a lot more confident. I'm able to share this stuff. I've done a lot of work to be able to do that, but what am I now? Do you know, that's kind of what I was thinking as I'm going through is like, am I, am I becoming an extrovert? I don't really like spending a lot of time around people, you know, sometimes fine, but I prefer to be on my own. So what am I? Am I an introvert? Am I an extrovert? You see, that that was kind of, I was just so confused by all this. Um, But that's that's way too reductionistic view on introverts and extroverts. A better way to think of it is how charged you are by social interaction. If you are drained by social interaction, you would be more of an introvert. If you're charged by social interaction, you're more of an extrovert. And that's a much better way to think of it. And this is coming from science. It's coming from Andrew Huberman's podcast. He, he's a scientist in, Sta- in Stanford. He shares amazing stuff. Every week he's like an hour and a half podcast or longer just on science on the human body, the human brain. I find it fascinating. Um, and this is coming from him. You can check out Huberman Lab or Andrew Huberman on YouTube. But that's what it is. It's if you're drained by social interaction or you're charged by it. So that makes perfect sense to me now because I I am introverted. I am drained by social interaction. I only have maybe two or three client sessions a day, like two, three hours speaking to clients. After that, I'm pretty drained. If I had six sessions, I'd end up not enjoying them by the end and be completely drained and need to recharge a lot. Uh, Even after this, I'm going to be talking for a while. I get pretty drained after it. So I realize that I am more introverted, but it doesn't mean you can't be confident. It doesn't mean you can't show, we'll say, extroverted qualities and inspire people, educate people, you know, look more confident. That's not what it means at all. You can be an introvert and have those things or work to have those things. So that was really empowering for me to kind of understand that and then yeah on the other spectrum if you're someone who kind of hates being on your own and you know you love being in a group center of attention you know having the crack nights out all the time all that kind of stuff yeah you're more likely an extrovert but the same flip side of the coin it doesn't mean you can't enjoy some alone time so anyway that just made a lot lot of sense to me and really clicked that the introvert extrovert it's all about how charged or drained you are by social interaction it's nothing to do with shy, confident, anything like that, you know, because that that was a bit of a self-limiting belief that I had around it. One more point on it too, which is very interesting. Loneliness isn't being alone, because that's what some people can think. Like, I, you know, I'm I'm happy being on my own most of the time, because I'm introverted. Um, But this is another thing that's too black and white. People think if you're on your own, you're lonely. Again, it's way too reductionistic. As we'll say here, make sure I get it right from Huberman. Loneliness isn't being alone. It's when your ideal social ratio isn't in alignment. Again, this made perfect sense. Depending where you are on the introvert, extrovert scale and how much social interaction you need before you're drained or before you get charged, that's your own social ratio and everyone will be a little bit different. So loneliness loneliness is actually when your own personal social ratio is out of alignment. So for example, for me, I'm happy enough maybe meeting a friend once a week for an hour, two hours, whatever. Maybe even a little bit more than that. That that's 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 me, like that's my social ratio met and I'm okay, you know, I'm fine and 
that's kind of where it's at. If I was meeting people every day, that, no, I, I don't like that. <laughs> and you kind of realize this, like, through college and stuff, you're around people all the time. I didn't like that. I would have preferred more time on my own. So you learn these things as you go along. But, yeah, that that's, that's mainly it. So, again, you'll figure that out for yourself. Maybe for you, it's, oh, I need to be around people six days a week or maybe two days a week or whatever but just understand that it's really down to your own social ratio and again it's all about understanding yourself listening to yourself figuring that out and see what is your ideal ratio and working towards that because like me if you're an introvert more introverted person you're not going to be happy if you're surrounded by people all the time and then if you're an extroverted person you're not going to be happy if you're on your own most of the time you know you need to find your own your own ratio that works for you and if you don't think this is important the final point on it it affects how long you live. Like, me being an introvert, I would think, oh, don't really need other people, you know, do it on my own, this kind of stuff. That's bullshit too. Like, humans, homo sapiens, the species that we are, we're a tribal species. We need community, no matter where you are on the scale of introvert, extrovert. We all need it. And studies even show, scientific studies going on, like, is a 50 plus years, you are more likely to die younger if you don't have social connection of some sort. And the studies even showed that if people, they said that they didn't even feel lonely, it still impacted them. So the finding from that study is, no matter who you are, the most extroverted or the most introverted person, you need some sort of social interaction and connection with other humans. That You need it. Um, so like I'm saying, the more introverted person like, like me, if that's you out there, you will have people you connect with. They're out there. You know, maybe you're connecting with me and you don't even know me. Like, there, there is people out there you will connect with. Um, and you just need to go find them. And that's it. And hey, talk to me. Message me on Instagram if that's you. If, if you've no one else to, that you want to chat to. Um, cool. So on to number seven. Jeez, we're 25 minutes in. Okay, speed it up a bit. Number seven. Paths to goals. Paths to goals will change. This is a quick one. Like in, in 2021, I had 19 goals down across like mobility, strength, uh, kickboxing, juggling, all these type of things. I love chasing progress. Um, but now, uh, this year, I'm putting way less goals. And again, there's no right or wrong way. Like it's, it's just down to your priorities, your personality, the way that you want to do it. I suppose the big difference now is I've got like busier with business starting from last year as I'm whatever get getting bigger and getting more clients and stuff so i had less time to allocate to training and, and that kind of stuff so i suppose back when i was chasing 19 20 goals i had a lot of time to dedicate to my training and um, but now i don't have as much so instead of keeping lots of goals and not reaching them and then being frustrated at myself i'm kind of be a bit more realistic toning them down more picking out a few specific ones like you know one arm chin up focusing a lot on that um, and squat squat and pancake for lower body one arm chin up hands and push up for upper body and then a few other goals sprinkled in there too but like out of my 19 goals last year swipe up in my review doc here and um, this was funny yeah <laughs> Go goals completed you know i like to share this because people probably you know think oh you're so disciplined you hit all your goals no goals completed 2021 three out of 19 there you go. But the one that's more important, moved closer towards 11 out of 19. So I made progress towards 11 out of my 19 goals, getting small gains in them, like I'm saying. Didn't necessarily hit them, but again, it's not really the goals that matter, is it? When I hit the goals, I'm going to make up new ones. It's, you know, it's who you're becoming along the way. Are you being the type of person you want to be? Are you going in the direction of the person you want to be? Like I was saying, someone you'd be proud of. I am. I'm trucking along towards those goals, but yeah, like I'm saying, I'm going to put less less goals there this time. We'll put 19 again. Okay, so on to number eight then. Your identity is the root of everything. Work on this first. Okay, so I suppose we're back into the more psych psychological side of it now. The quote here, yeah, without knowledge of which port to sail to, no wind is favorable. This is coming from Seneca. If that quote isn't making sense, if you don't know what port you're trying to sail to, if you, aka, if you don't know where you're trying to go, no wind is favorable, meaning no motivation is going to serve you. Think of it like a car journey, if that makes more sense. If you don't have the GPS, if you don't know where your end destination is, like who you want to become, what you want to do, you're never going to, how are you ever going to get there? It doesn't matter how much petrol's in the car, how much motivation you have. 
if you, if you don't know where you're going, just be driving around forever, you're never going to get there. So things like, oh, I need more motivation, more discipline. That only works if you know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, forget all that now. Take a step back, work on yourself, understand yourself more. You know, what are your values? What do you stand for? What's the person you want to become? All that stuff. Like I said, that's ground zero. Before you worry about anything else, about all oh, your strategies, your tactics, all this stuff. If you don't know where you want to go, all of it is pointless. You're just going to be wasting time. So that's that's a really important one. And this is something I keep cultivating, keep working on my identity, learning more about myself. Hence the stuff at the start about relationships and other things. It's an ongoing process, like for your whole life. You're you're going to keep learning more, learning more about yourself. Even as Carol Jung says, up until 40 is just research. Like you're still learning about yourself, kind of who, you, who your true self, what you want to do. Um, who you want to become, all this type of stuff. It, it's it's never ending. So, yeah, the things I had here just for you guys, like who you are, your values, your purpose, what you stand for, the change you want to see in the world, you know, all these things are just points to kind of get you thinking. If you're like, I, I don't know who I am or what I want to do, you know, you need to think like, what do you value? I could do a separate podcast on values maybe because I won't go off on it now, but like, what do you value? Um, you know, what are your beliefs? What do you stand for? What's the change you want to see in the world? You know, these are good questions to start answering for yourself. And like I found, a lot of the time, scratching your own itch is a good start. Like, what's things that have plagued your life? Like, for me, it was movement limitations, mobility issues. And then that's how I got into this and why I have such passion for it, because it really affected my life in the past. If it didn't, I wouldn't give a shit about it. So that's that's a good place to start. Last thing on this thing, yeah, getting clarity on, and vision on this each morning. So this is my own kind of, um, if you want to call it journaling, I suppose, or just, yeah, like looking at my notes and values and stuff each morning, getting clarity and purpose on that each day because it's easy to get caught up in life and stress and whatever else. Every morning, a bit of a recap on what are my values? Who do I want to become? You know, what am I working towards? Remind myself of this every day to get my mindset right so I can focus on that throughout the day. So that's kind of how I think of it. Clarity is the huge thing there. Clarity on who you want to become, clarity on where you're trying to go, clarity on what you need to do each week and each day to move towards it. Then you're golden. Small gains, start working towards it. Um, that's what you want. So I kind of think of it like, you know, I like analogies to help us to understand things better. Every morning, work through the emotions or whatever it is that's going on. I think of it like there's clouds in the way. You're trying to see the sun, there's clouds in the way, which are your emotions. You're never going to be able to see the sun or like, what, what direction should I be going? Because I can't really see the sun, whatever. Work on the clouds, work on the emotions, understand of yourself, get them out of the way. Oh, now I can see the path, I can see where I'm trying to go, work towards it, okay? Next one then, or sorry, to, fi- to finish on that, like obviously if you don't know, I'm the guy who didn't settle. This is my, you know, my identity that's true to myself. It's not, it's not like I've made this up for Instagram rent and when I thought very deeply about it, what kind of, what kind of symbolizes who I am in one word, that would be it. You know, the person I want to be, guy who didn't settle, the guy who doesn't settle for things holding back in life, the guy who takes ownership, educates himself, tries to go for progress no matter what, doesn't matter if I get there or not, the process of trusting myself, believing in myself, following my true self, I'm going to be happy either way once I do that. And I'm just now trying to share that with the world because if it inspires and educates other people to do it too, all the better. So yeah, on to number nine then. Yeah, okay, so the next two are actually work stuff, okay? So, like, work-life balance, energy management, productivity, all that type of stuff, okay? So, some really good stuff in here, I was going to say, in my own humble opinion, but, look, it's work for me. Like I said, all this is just stuff that worked for me. Hopefully, it'll work for you, too. Number nine, <clears throat> work-life balance and energy management. There's a book called Top 5 Regrets of the Dying. Number one is not living a life that's true to myself this is where all the other stuff is coming from about following your true self understanding yourself because that's the biggest regret people have on their deathbeds it's not going to be mine hopefully it's not going to be yours either okay so that's why a lot of the psychology stuff is there but another one is working too hard so i did go down the rabbit hole of, oh what's my passion don't know eventually found it worked all the time on it that that's not going to be the happiest life either because Another top five regret of the dying is working too hard. You know, I wish I didn't work as hard. I wish I enjoyed other parts of life. So work-life balance is something I worked on more towards the tail end of last year. 
and still going forward this year and like one thing is this is coming from the business mentor like i'm saying follow the results he knows a lot more about this than me building successful businesses and the the roadblocks that are going to hit you at different levels working too hard was one that i was at planning fun into the week that's what i do now and you know it sounds it sounds a bit silly but i suppose if you're you know essentially an entrepreneur like if you're online coach or anything like that a very driven person it will be hard to kind of take a step back and be able to look at this more objectively so yeah that's what we're we're for not for us that's what we're recommended to do and i've done it and it's been very very good planning my fun into my weeks at the very start before i put in any of the work stuff into my calendar so like i'm saying this links in with the social ratio i've one or two things a week and that's it so usually either on a saturday or a sunday plus on a wednesday so what i do now is i like wednesday evening is my kind of fun thing I'm, i force myself to go do something fun like outside of work something social might meet a friend for a dinner or else actually go to the cinema by myself and there that's the introverted thing i fucking loved it <laughs> so you know because we have blocks around it i was chatting to another coach about it like man i went to the cinema by myself like i'm doing that now every every like second week I fucking love it like because i love movies and like i said i'm introverted you don't go to the movies to chat you go to get engrossed in in, in the movie so I was like, what, why didn't I do this before? And, and as he said, because we're told, oh, you're a loser if you go to the cinema by yourself. Like, all this stuff from school, you know. Look, we're all younger back then, and yeah, whatever. We all understand that. But yeah, like, just finding things each week that you enjoy, you know, to, to switch off, to recharge. Um, yeah, like I said, mine is kind of two things. That's more than enough for me. Sometimes it's just one. Like, this week is now it's just going to be one on the Friday, meeting some friends. But um yeah, because you're, you're not going to look be on your deathbed looking back being like, oh, Jesus, wish I spent more time working hard and not meeting friends. Or, you know, you're not going to have that regret, but you, you might have the regret of working too hard. So don't want you to have that one. So that was it. Yeah, plan a fun into the week to prevent overwhelm, improving your quality of life, you know, having no regrets. But it also increases your productivity. So that's why they're telling me that from the business point of view. It's not to, oh, Mark, we want to make you happy. They're worried about my business. It actually makes you much more effective then because I switch off Wednesday evening. When I come back Thursday, it's nearly like coming back on a Monday and I'm you know, I'm ready to go. So that was that one. The next one then is more around productivity. Okay, so productivity. What that is, is working the most efficiently and the most effectively that you can. Okay, productivity, working the most efficiently and effectively that you can, which is going to give you the best outcomes. Excuse me. You need to, with your work, you need to think of outcomes. That's what's actually, that's what matters, is the outcome. That's all people care about, the outcome. People don't care how long you've worked. You know, I've worked in lots of nine to five jobs and come through that, those industries and stuff before. And like the busy badge of honor always, that always, you know, triggered me, we'll say. And I get, you know, I I can kind of see now in different ways. I knew there was better ways to do things. You know, it's coming in working nine to five, sitting there, doing fuck all, and then doing bits and pieces and whatever. Like, I knew there was better ways to work. I just didn't fully understand it then. So the big takeaway here was working like a lion, not like a cow. Okay, this is coming from the mentors, and it made a lot of sense. I've come to this conclusion through Tim Ferriss, who has a book, The 4-Hour Workweek, who has a lot of stuff which is very similar. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about it now. We're nearly done. Um... So working like a lion, not like a cow, what does that mean? If you don't know, a lion sleeps like 20 hours a day, 20 to 22 hours a day. Then it gets up, goes fucking full beast mode, kills something, and then eats that. And then the family get the leftovers. He goes back to sleep. So essentially what he does is he has his time where he fully switches off. Then he gets up and he works at his 100% of his capacity and he switches between the two. There's no messing around. There's no half hours in it. None of that fully rest then fully work whereas what does the cow do <laughs> just up chewing grass all day you know <laughs> and look that's what they have to do whatever but it's just to think of that in terms of your work are you are you a lion that has certain times where you switch off in the evening you've your cut off times i finish work at five i finish work at six or whatever um, and then you relax or are you the one that's half working half relaxing 
you're not doing either. You're, you're just stressing yourself because you're not working very effectively or efficiently. So you're not getting much done, but then you're also not enjoying life too because you're not fully switching off because you think you have to work because you didn't get enough done and all that kind of stuff. We've all been there. I've been there too. You're not happy. You're just straight up, you're not, you're not happy. There's no other way to go around it. You could be doing it so much better. So if you are the cow, we'll tell you stuff now about becoming the lion, working more efficiently and effectively. So... <clears throat> yeah, I know this. I know this stuff anyway from from the Tim Ferriss book. What is effective? Being like, like I said, productivity is effectiveness and efficiency. That will give you the best outcome in the shortest amount of time. Effectiveness is working on the right stuff. Okay, think of it. If you have eight hours in the day, you don't confront the tough stuff you need to work on to move the needle in whatever business you're in. You're focusing on the little tasks. You could work twice the amount of time, but you're not you're not going to push the needle forward. So that's why this is Pareto's law coming in here, the 80-20 rule. Pick out one to three things that day that's going to push the needle forward in your business. That's it. The rest of stuff doesn't fucking matter. That's the reality of it. One to three things that'll push the needle forward, get those done. So that's Pareto's law, a way to start. Write out 10 or 15 things you need to do. Circle the top three that will have the biggest impact in moving you forward prioritize them first so that's been most effective picking the most important things that are going to move the needle for whatever it is that that you do the other side of the equation then about being efficient this is about getting the most amount of work done in the least amount of time that's what efficiency is that's what we all want to do this we're going to use something called parkinson's rule and that rule means The time we allocate to a task, the task will swell to take up that amount of time. I'll give an example here. It'll click with you straight away. You're in college. You have have two subjects, okay? On one subject, you have three hours to submit a project. In the other subject, you have three weeks. Which one are you going to prioritize and work faster on? Very simple. But the question here is why? Why? You said the one with three hours. Why? And you would say, because I only have three hours to do it. Exactly. So you have a small window to get that work done. So that means that its importance swells massively. The smaller the window, the higher it goes up in importance. So that's why if you're like, and, and I resonate with this, I'm, I'm essentially self-employed. I don't have to do anything. I could just lie in my bed and watch Netflix all day. And no one's here telling me what to do. I have to manage that myself. So I essentially have to do nothing, really. So then, like, my tasks have loads of time. Oh, I can do them whenever I want. That's bad for efficiency because then if I have a week to do something, it's going to take up the week. So that's why we need to use Parkinson's rule. Allocate time blocks. So we need to start using time blocks and reduce the amount of time we have to do something. So you're playing a bit of a mind game here on yourself. Like, you need to convince yourself, right, I have my three tasks from Pareto's Law. The three things I need to get done today... Pick them out, slot them in your calendar, right? Most important task, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Need to get it done in that time. I'll even use my stopwatch, put that out on the table, counting down an hour, an hour and a half, get my shit done. And that'll get you in the zone. So that's what you need to do. Time blocks um, from the other one, the Pareto's Law, picking the task, putting them in time blocks in your calendar, putting a specific end time on them, which will push you forward to working efficiently. And have certain times of the day where you have to switch off, like... Make promises to yourself. When I hit 6 p.m. today, I'm switching off. If I didn't get the stuff done, good. It'll force me tomorrow to get more work done before 6 then, won't it? So we need to start working on those things to make you be more efficient. So that's what you combine the two of them together. That's what getting the most outcome, getting the most progress in your business is combining the two of those. Being very effective, picking the top three things, being the most efficient, putting them in time slots to make sure you get them done quickly. Probably don't have too much time left here so yeah that's the productivity hopefully that was useful i found that stuff very useful and like you know i'm gonna tell you an example here and uh, you look more blocks and me being like oh you're being cocky and stuff here but what i'm trying to do is practicing what i preach this is why i tell stories of me overcoming things it's not to be like look i'm cool i can do this you could fucking do it too if you wanted it's more to show that i'm speaking from a place of experience like i one thing i'll never do is be an armchair expert you know someone who sits off on the side isn't in the game of life, getting hurt, you know, losing, failing, some wins, whatever. That's how you learn. This is how you get life experience and a bit of wisdom on certain things. I'm never going to be one to sit on the sidelines and be preaching advice from a place where I don't know what I'm talking about. So like on that 
productivity, the efficiency and effectiveness. I use that now, self-employed, but I use this in in other nine to five jobs. Like I, the last job I was in, I worked in, in Facebook. I only say that because just to show like it's it's a decent company and they, there's very high standards in there. Um, and, you know, if if you're not good at your job or you can't hit the results and stuff, you, you know, you will be let go. So, I, you know, I knew then from the truth to myself stuff that I was going to do this. I was going to leave. I had no future in that business. I was mentally cut, cut off from it and didn't want to work. So I essentially ended up doing this stuff through necessity. Because if I had eight hours in the day, I'd only work maybe four because I didn't like the job and like... The other hours I was making my Instagram stories and stuff, trying to launch the business on the side. So I would make sure I get all that done during my work hours. So I'm essentially getting paid for it. So I would have worked maybe half the amount of time that other people would actually work at their jobs. But I still did, still did okay. Like, like there was even times I was doing well. You know, I, I got a promotion at one stage in there. I was like, like what? But, you know, so, but again, it's just, this Tim Ferriss, it's what I told you there. I was focusing on the outcomes. I was focusing on being efficient or sorry, effective and efficient. And that was it. Like a quick example there, I worked in recruitment. Recruitment is about filling roles. I have to find good people for a job, get them into the manager. If the manager likes them, he'll hire them. Cool. So what are my top three tasks? Finding the right people, getting calls with the right people, sending the good ones through to the manager. That's the top three tasks. But, you know, in that other job, you'd fucking 20, th- you know, oh, work on this project, or oh, meet this person, or oh, network here, da 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 I did none of them. I was like, no, top three. Stayed on my own most of the time. Did those three. And then that was getting me the outcomes and the results because I was hiring people. That's what all my manager cares about. I'm hiring people. I'm hitting the results. All the other stuff, like networking projects. No. Pinging messages every day. That's the main thing. Like, oh, you're just replying to emails to messages. What are you really getting done? Fuck all. So, you know, there would have been running jokes about where is Mark today is even in and stuff because I'm just on my own doing the three tasks, not being letting other things take up my time, and then I do my Instagram stuff. So look, I'm not saying do that. I knew I was going to leave, but you can see how that productivity stuff works. There's no other way to say it. It really works. I was getting good outcomes from a half or two-thirds the amount of time that that I should have been allocating to it. So last one then, finish on this one. I'm only keep looking at the time because that camera has like 58 minutes of recording time. Uh, So we're on like 40 something now. Um, Yeah, last one. Have more conviction. This is a big one for me. Again, these are all lessons for me. Hopefully, you'll pick up something from some of them. Like, <laughs> you know, I like to think I'm fairly self-aware, well, on most things. Do you, like, you'll probably notice my conviction goes up as, as the podcast goes on, and I'll get more into it. I'm more confident in myself. I I will bring more conviction into it, whereas at the start, <laughs> it takes me a while to get into it. I was a bit nervous again, even doing this one. You know, I'll just always be a bit nervous. Yeah, from from the introverted side, which is fine. So, yeah, my takeaway here was, yeah, to have more conviction and potency in what I'm doing, because this increase increases the effects of what I do. It essentially essentially supercharges it. You know, if even like on Instagram or even like with the podcast stuff, if I was like, oh, oh yeah, I. I think like if you take a bit of ownership of yourself maybe and you try and educate yourself like it could help you like it might help you who knows I don't know what do I know you know if I keep going out because that's how I would have felt at the very start if I go out without message to the world who the fuck is going to listen to me no one's going to listen to me because I'm not confident in myself so if I'm not confident in myself how are you going to be confident in me and what I'm saying you know you won't be and that's the reality of it so again like I'm saying a few times throughout the podcast working on yourself is ground zero for anything just to be a better person, better relationship with yourself, but to have a better business, better relationships. It all starts with you understanding yourself, confidence in yourself. So that was that really kind of clicked with me because I want to get the message out. I need to work on myself. I need to be more confident. I need to be more potent. That's going to help you guys on the other end. And the way that I thought of it was the more conviction, I'm, like the more potent my message is through conviction, the more potential actualization from you guys might be a weird way to phrase it that's just the way it clicked in my head i'm like essentially if i if i work on myself if i get more conviction out to you guys you're going to get better results essentially because you're going to believe in what i'm saying you're more likely to use it so that's kind of how i frame things sometimes i'm like how would i explain this because you know i i don't i don't like the spotlight i don't want it you know but when i feel like i have a message to share i force myself to go into it so 
I put it more about you guys. You know, it's e- it just works for me because I'm like, you know, I, like I said, I don't. Want, it's not about me. We'll say I put it more about you. I'm like, do I want to help them? Yes. What do I need to do? Who do I need to become? And that that helps me better. So I'm like, if I want you guys to trust the information, take back control of your body. You know, take ownership, educate yourselves, take back control of body, mindset, life, all this good stuff. I need to be confident in myself. I need to have more conviction. I need to say it, what I mean. Because the funny thing is, outwardly, I won't have as much conviction as I do inwardly. Inwardly, I'm very confident. Inwardly, I have so much conviction. Inwardly, nothing will ever fucking stop me. And that's how I feel deep down from all the work I've done on myself. You know, all the progress I've gotten so far, mobility, strength, all these challenges I do, the run an untrained marathon there in four hours, 59 minutes in barefoot shoes, like... I've been building that up for so long, the inner citadel, as the Stoics say. I have incredible confidence in myself internally, but but that's in here. That's in my head. You guys don't know that, you know, or maybe you do from like follow me on Instagram. But yeah, I'm, I'm trying to what I'm trying to do. My lesson from last year, like trying to get more of that out of my head and from me into you guys, because that's where my barrier is. Because I'm more shy, you know. I'd hate, you know, to think that people think I'm cocky and stuff like that if I'm telling stories because, you know, it's more of a place of you just lessons I've learned and I want you guys to learn from it. So, yeah, that again, that's my own personal blocks and stuff. But I've realized if I want people to get better progress, I need to bring that conviction I have for myself outwards more towards towards others because that's going to help you more. So, yeah, and the, the line I had to myself sometimes was, don't let my emotions affect other people's progress. That's the way I phrase it for myself sometimes. It's a bit, it's a bit, of, bit of mental jujitsu on yourself, a bit of mental chess of like, right, Mark, if you want these guys to get progress, you know, you, you need to, don't let your, don't let your shyness stop it. Don't like, are you going to let your, the fact that you're shy affect John, David, whoever from getting progress in the mobility, from possibly changing their lives, getting out of chronic pains and injuries, getting back, doing what they love to do? The answer is no. I'll fucking, whatever, speak on a stage, whatever, bring it like, you know, this is the way I need to, need to phrase it for myself to kind of, you know, bring out the true self and be like, fuck it, like, just, just do it, just do it, so, yeah, and the last thing on that actually, which, which was helpful for me, you know, on the conviction, you will know the type of, like, sorry, going back to before, I'm saying, think of the type of person you want to be, if you're you're asking yourself that question, you're like, I, I, I don't know, I'm not too sure the type of person I want to be. Think of people you admire. Think of people you look up to. And there's your answer. You know, you already know subconsciously traits and like characteristics that you want to improve on. You already know them. Like, I don't know if you're inspired by me in some way. It's probably because you want to be more authentic maybe you want to you want to just speak what you what you say you want to speak from the heart what you say you want to follow your true self that's usually what people tell them on instagram you seem open authentic no bullshit if you're resonating with me a lot that's probably because you see that in yourself and you want more of it you want to be more like this you want to just speak out and say say what you're thinking and not be held back by whatever society in general or just your own personal fears so that really helped me because Yeah, it was just a quote from someone I was following where they said, yeah, the people you admire, those traits are within you, but just not, you you want to grow them. So that's why, like, I love people like Jocko Willink, Jordan Peterson. And then I look at those two, I was analyzing them one day and I'm like, why? Like, what is it I like about them? I think of Jocko and I think of Jordan Peterson. They're both authentic and they both have conviction. That's two things I like about them. Jocko doesn't sit there going, oh, I think... I think it's probably helpful if you have a bit of discipline in your life. Maybe, I don't know. Who? What do I know? Maybe, you know, you know, he's like, discipline equals freedom. The more discipline you have in your life, the more freedom you'll get in your life in whatever it is that you want to do. That's why I have his t-shirt when I'm working out. Um, you know, you have the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. I'll choose discipline, you know. So he has conviction in his message, which is what gets it through to me. Same with Jordan Jordan Peterson. You know, not, not that I'll agree with everything he says, but a lot of stuff he says, I'll connect with him too because he's so authentic and open. You'll see him even even crying on some podcasts and stuff. And I'm just like, fuck me, that's just, there's real, there's no bullshit with him. Um, and he's conviction in what he's saying as well. He's not second-guessing himself. So there I could kind of see with the conviction, I do want to have more conviction, but I need to work on it. You know, you can see this in other people. So that's a good way to think of it. If you're not too sure, 
of the kind of person you want to be, who do you admire? And then think, why? Like, what, what traits of theirs do I admire and want? And you have those in yourself, but just not to to a big enough degree yet. It's your job to take a bit of ownership and start start working on them. 50 minutes. Okay, cool. So this is a bit of a long one. Um, but yeah, just, just life lessons from 2021. If I sent this to Mark five years ago, he would have got great, great uh, wisdom from it. So hopefully for you guys watching, some of it was useful. Like I said, take with a pinch of salt. All anyone can tell, I said this on Instagram the other day, all anyone can tell you is their opinion based on their education and experience. And that's it. Nobody knows it all. And like I learned that when I went to five experts on the body and they're all telling me five different diagnoses of what's wrong with me. I told them the same stuff and I got five different diagnoses from five different people. So that's when that shattered for me and I realized, oh, just because he's a doctor doesn't mean he knows everything. No, nobody actually knows everything. And that all just shattered for me. So again, I'll say it. All people can tell you is their opinion. Is their opinion based on their education and their experience. People have different education and people have different experiences. So people will give you different opinions. And that's it. So essentially, I'm giving you my opinion today from my education and from my experience. And I hope that it's helpful. I hope it's inspirational and educational, like I said, hoping to get you some some progress. Okay, cool. We'll end it there. Hopefully that was useful. And yeah, like I'm ending them all with my, my little tagline. This is my biggest life lesson to date is you don't get what you deserve, you get what you settle for. <sighs> you say that more conviction, don't I? You don't get what you deserve, you get what you settle for. Okay, so that's my biggest life lesson that I took from it so far. Hopefully it's of some use to you guys as well. Okay, cool. We'll end it there. We'll see you in the next one.